If you'll recall a while back when I got started with the radio series, I talked about the final part of the uh, radio would be the uh, PA or the power amplifier. So I thought I'd build one up uh, and in the process get a better understanding of uh, you know what the various parameters of PA were, how to configure it and so on and so forth. Um, so I've done some reading of the uh, SSDRA, the uh, solid state uh, design for the radio amateur and uh, EMRFD. Uh, but honestly, one of the best um, kind of tutorials that I've seen was uh, a video Charlie Morris did, which uh, I'll include a link to below. Uh, in the video, he says it's not a tu tutorial, but uh, I think he's actually being too humble. Uh, it's, a, it's a great video. Anyway, what I thought I'd put together in this video is uh, a roughly uh, 5 watt uh, power amplifier for 20 meters or 14 megahertz. And uh, the circuit that you can see uh, down below is uh, LT Spice, um, which I've been doing the design for um, that uh, power amplifier. And uh, just let me walk you through the, uh, the various components of that, uh, of that circuit. So you can see in the circuit that uh, it's basically a two-stage amplifier. We've got a 2N3904 as the initial stage here. We've got a uh, 2SC5706 in the uh, second stage. And then that moves on to a push-pull configuration where we have two BS170 MOSFETs configured in push-pull. And after the MOSFETs, we have this uh, RF combiner out here which com combines the two signals from the MOSFETs and uh, gets put through a, a 50 ohm load at the end. Okay, so let's uh, kick off the uh, simulation in LT Spice. Uh, here's my uh, voltage source here. I've got that set to a, a series resistance of 50 ohms, which is uh, what my SIGGEN is set up to do. Uh, the input uh, voltage is uh, 0 0.02 volts, or 20 millivolts peak to peak. And then uh, what we'll do is I'll run the simulation and then I'll probe this point here and this point here. So let's kick that off. Take a little while to run. Uh, when it does run and it's finished, which it is now, I can uh, probe these two points here. And here's the, uh, here is the, the voltage at those two points. So yeah, as you can see, it's in, uh, those signals are in, are in antiphase, as you'd expect through the splitter. And then the peak to peak is uh, from 5.55 volts down to 4.45 volts, so well, that's a 1.1 volt peak-to-peak -peak signal. So let's move over to the actual circuit and see how closely the circuit uh, uh, looks like the uh, simulation. Okay, so let's walk through the uh, circuit that I've, uh, that I've built up here. Uh, and for those who are interested, I have the LT Spice model up on GitHub, uh, and I'll include a link below. So let's just walk through some circuit highlights. So starting out of the input, uh, bear with me, right over here. Um, and that's basically set from my signal generator to inject a 100 millivolt peak to peak signal at 14 megahertz or on the 20 meter band. So here and here is the 4.7K and 1K bias divider for the 2N3904 transistor. And then at the emitter of the transistor, I have a 47 ohm resistor to set the DC operating point. And that's in parallel with a 100 nanofarad and another 47 uh, ohm resistor to uh, basically set the AC resistance. So basically the AC resistance at the emitter will be, it'll ignore this uh, 100 nanofarad cap here. And it'll be basically the in parallel combination of these two 47 ohm resistors or roughly uh, um, uh, 40, uh, sorry, 23 ohms uh, uh, AC resistance. So moving on, I couple the uh, first and second stages through this uh, FT3743 toroid, which has a uh, turns ratio of 24 turns on the first stage side to seven turns on the second stage side or roughly 200 microhenries on the first stage side to 20 microhenries on the second stage side. What this means is that the resistance presented at the collector of the first stage will be roughly 10 times the input impedance of the second stage. And then the gain of the first stage will be this impedance presented to the collector 
divided by the AC resistance at the emitter. So here's the circuit here. Here's those two 220 ohm resistors here, which I'm probing uh, the, the uh, channel one and channel two on the scope. And moving up to the, the scope itself, we can see those two signals there. Now, unfortunately, they're not at the 1.1 volt peak to peak. To peak. So this uh, the uh, uh, the uh, channel one is at uh, roughly 0.9 of a volt peak to peak, and channel two is uh, as expected around about the same. So 0.9 of a volt peak to peak, very roughly. Um, so uh, the the simulation's uh, close-ish to the circuit, but uh, but uh, not exactly there. And uh, there's many many different uh, reasons for that. Obviously, all the transistors are simulated in there. I do have the uh, two two N. Um, 3904 model and the 2SC5706 model in there. Uh, lots of different reasons why this why it could be different, but uh, it's it's pretty close. Um, so what I might uh, move on to next is uh, basically I'll build up the um, remainder of the circuit, including those two MOSFETs. Let's just go back to the the circuit so that we can actually uh, that we can actually see that. So uh, bear with me. So as I said, I've built up to uh, this part right here, those two 220 ohm resistors. And then what remains in the circuit are these two MOSFETs, BS170s, and then a, an RF combiner here with a 50 ohm output. Now just a note, uh, there is actually a bias setting on this uh, on the, uh, the gates of the BS170s, and that comes from a... Uh, that comes from a five volt uh, regulator that I've got up here. So we'll get the rest of that circuit put in there and we should be able to uh, sort of vary the, uh, the input drive and see what, uh, what various outputs we're getting on that. Now, I, I'm not, I don't plan on heat sinking the uh, BS 170s. Um, so I'll have to be, I'll, I'll have to test quickly. Uh, this is right on the edge of these guys' performance. Um, so, uh, so we'll have to see, uh, be careful there. But anyway, that's to come up next. Okay, so here's a uh, quick update on the, on the circuit here. Um, here's the uh, two BS170s in the push-pull configuration. Here's the uh, RF combiner, and that's uh, three turns by filler on this side, five turns uh, on the output side. I've got a big uh, 10 watt uh, 50 ohm resistor on the output there. And uh, I did have to sort of liberally sprinkle these 100 nanofarad caps throughout the circuit. Uh, when I first started, it was, uh, I had one here and one here, but there was still quite a bit of distortion in the signal. And, and there still is quite a bit of distortion in the output as well. So, uh, but you'll see that. So let me just pan up to the oscilloscope and. What I've got this, the input at the moment is, well, let me turn the input down a little bit. Excuse me, I'm just moving this around a little bit. So I'll start with, uh, let's say around, uh, start at 15 millivolts peak to peak input and uh, let's see what we can see there. So there you can see a signal, that's uh, around about 17, 18 volts um, peak to peak. Uh, but it is somewhat distorted there, as you can see. Let me just, uh, I've got to uh, keep turning this uh, off and on fairly quickly because uh, those BS170s are definitely getting hot there. So that's at 14 megahertz uh, with a 15 millivolt uh, input signal. You're getting around about 17 volts. So let, let me turn that up a little bit. So let's go up to, let's say, 35 millivolts peak to peak on the input the drive input there, and there's the output there, 25, 20, 25 volts peak to peak, uh, and I believe uh, that's getting close to 2 watts output, but as you can see, as I start to turn this up, let me go up to 55 volts, uh, sorry, 55 millivolts uh, drive signal, you can see that signal is definitely getting uh, distorted at that point. And one of the other things to note is that this is quite different to the kind of the, the predicted uh, output from, from LT Spice. Um, so just to give you a feel on a 10 millivolts input, a 10 millivolts input uh, 
LT Spice was predicting around a uh, peak to peak of around about 5 volts, but you can see here, in this case, the peak to peak is around about 14 volts. Uh, so, uh, so that's quite interesting. What I might do as a next step is uh, throw on a, uh, a low pass uh, filter uh, configured for 14 megahertz and we'll see the output uh, after that. Um, uh, I, do have to, uh, I do have to be turn this quick, and, quick off and on because I've got no heat sinking on the BS170 so uh, that definitely, uh, they definitely do get hot so that's why you're seeing a quick on and off. But anyway, um, this is uh, good progress. What, like I said, I'll, I'll put a low pass filter after the output um, and then uh, we'll have a, come back and have a look at the, uh, at the final uh, output signal. So just walking through the design of this um, low pass filter, um, I thought I'd just uh, show this that this cool little site that I uh, that I found, um, and it basically uh, allows you to design all sorts of different types of uh, low pass, high pass, band pass filters. You get to pick the type, Chebyshev, Butterworth, and so on and so forth. So basically, what I'm going to do is uh, I'll crack, I'll set my cutoff frequency to 16 megahertz. Uh, this will be order five, which means there are five sort of uh, discrete components in this. In this case, because it's shunt first, there'll be a three caps and uh, two inductors. Um, and then, uh, you know, you can either choose exact values or standard values. Um, and then when you press compute, it gives you a nice little picture up the top there. So you can see this one... Um, has three capacitors, 220 picofarad, 390 picofarad, 220 picofarad, and then two inductors that are the same, uh, 680, both 680 uh, nanohenries. Um, and that's where the 50 ohm uh, input impedance, 50 ohm output impedance, obviously if that changes, then the, then the filter criteria will change. So what I'll do is I'll build up this, I'll put it on the board, and then we'll come back and test. Oh, just a final note, uh, I think some of uh, you have seen this before, but here's a little uh, site that also allows you to uh, basically uh, input the uh, inductance of the uh, required here, and uh, you pick which particular toroid and toroid material you're using. So I'll use a T37-6 here, and I want uh, 680 nanohenries, so that's 0.68 microhenries, hit calc, and there you can see 15 turns. So a pretty simple little calculator here, and uh, it has all sorts of uh, support for all the all the different types of the uh, toroids you're probably going to use in your uh, experimentation. Anyway, let's move on to the low pass filter. Okay, so I've got the uh, low pass filter installed. Here's the two uh, T37-6 toroids with 15 windings each, two uh, 220 picofarad capacitors. And then I've got uh, two silver mica capacitors up in the middle here that which, uh, add up to 390 picofarads. And then I'm sending the, uh, the output to the uh, power meter, which you've, uh, which you've seen earlier. And also I've got the oscilloscope hooked up to the output so that we can see the, uh, the purity of the signal, or, or not the purity as it, as it was. So, uh, so let's turn that on and just see first the power output. So that's about four, four watts there, and you can see the power reducing the longer I keep it on. And my suspicion at the moment is the poor heat sinking on the uh, BS-170s is causing that. But just panning up to the oscilloscope, you'll be able to see the... Uh... Oh, and we're running at, uh, this time it's 100 uh, millivolts peak to peak on the input side. So let's just zoom into the uh, oscilloscope so you can see that better. There we go. So let's have a look at that. That's about 33 volts peak to peak uh, on the output there. I kind of daren't uh, drive it much higher for fear of uh, blowing up the BS-170s, but oh, well, let's be a devil. I'll go up a little bit here. So I'm up at 100, the 30 millivolts peak to peak now. Let's just pan down so we can see the power output. And there's 4.6 watts of output. And that uh, signal look, looks a lot better than it did before, uh, a lot closer to a pure sine wave now that I've filtered out all those, all those harmonics. So, um, so obviously, uh, that was a bit of fun. Um, what I might do next is I'll wrap this video, but I kind of uh, 
let's just pan down to the board so we can see what I'm kind of going to be talking about. Now, obviously, all this, uh, all these kind of components sitting off the board like this, or all these, uh, all these leads, isn't good in an RF circuit. Um, so what I might do is. This is a good uh, sort of an experimental test, but what I might do next is actually make a PCB uh, and then repeat this with a PCB uh, with proper well, proper heat sinking for these BS170s, and uh, we'll see if we get any better performance uh, out of the uh, out of the amplifier. So anyway, this is a wrap for now. I uh, hope you enjoyed this. I'll include the links to some of those materials below. Uh, and also I'll put the uh, circuit that I've uh, built up here uh, out, on, uh, out on the GitHub repo. I'll see if I can get, I'm pretty sure LT Spice has a way of outputting PDFs, so I'll, uh, I'll get a, an output for those of you who uh, don't have access to LT Spice. But anyway, uh, that's all for now. It's a wrap. Uh, I'll follow this up with a PCB version of the video.